just because your man of God has said someone is suitable for you and you don't take your time, due diligence, who is this man? Who is this woman? Just because God has spoken does not mean that you two are. No, yeah. no. And most people in church are getting lost in that. And you find that someone is not taking time to know what are the weaknesses of this person? How is his anger like? Do you know my sister started telling me, you are doing wrong. I know that woman, she's a con. Martha, don't go into this. And in my head, I'm like, you are an enemy. Oh, ma. How can you attack a servant of God like that? This is a prophetess. This is a prophetess. You're saying she's a con? Yeah, you're calling her a con. You cannot do that to me. Go try that elsewhere. And my sister did everything to break us apart, Lynn. Coming back to Kenya, the moment we landed, a call comes through from Prophetess. Just when we go to the house, a call comes through from Prophetess. And she gives an instruction. You need to move from that place and find a comfortable neighborhood. People who are jobless. Find a comfortable neighborhood and you need to move there. And once you move there, I want you to keep my room for me. We moved to the Ndigwa. And the Ndigwa was expensive. Imagine moving from Umoja, a house of 9,000 shillings, all the way to the Ndigwa, 25,000 shillings. And you are jobless. You don't have a job. You don't even know where tomorrow's food is coming from. You just know you have partners. Hello, good morning, and a warm welcome to LNS. My name is Lynn Gugin. Now, I have never had a guest that you guys requested more than my guest today. When we aired the story of Paul Magu, the one I did on heinous crimes, on the comment section, you specifically said, Lynn, we need this woman to come and share her story of religion brainwashing, how a certain prophetess ruined her marriage and what happened to her because we as Africans, we need to start having these hard conversations, especially on all these cults and religion. If you send me to bring someone obviously I am going to do it and just to appreciate you for being active participants of our stories and even telling me sometimes you know channeling your energy and telling me Lynn this is the person we would love to listen to and that's why together we keep creating a very impactful society so I'm about to let her introduce herself but before that I have to say thank you to my people at Elegance Fashion Kenya for always coming through with amazing outfits for me this is not the first time you have seen me with these outfits. I want to make it known that it's okay. So I hope you love the fit. If you do, their contact details are right here on the screen. Go get yourself something if you can. And now without further ado, please allow me to let our incredible guest introduce herself. Hello. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Mama. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uko salam. I am well, thank yes. you. Yes. Looking lovely. Asante. You get this a lot of times. Sir? Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going back mm -hmm. to knowing this conversation was supposed to happen when? It was supposed to happen in 2021. 2021. Yes. Yeah. Let me just tell you guys how this happened. Yeah. You know, on the comment you said we want her. Yeah. Then I go, I look for her contact details online. Now as I'm dialing, yeah. I already have her on my phone. Yes. And I'm like, oh my goodness, we spoke <laughs> in 2021. Yes, we did. But timing is everything. Timing is everything. Thing. Yeah. And I'm the one who had tried to reach out, yeah. but uh, somehow it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And I really thank God that it did not work. Okay. Because I told God, uh, the right timing, you connect me to Lynn. Mm. And 
because I know I have a story and I would want people yeah. to learn. Mm. Not that I want to play victim, not that I want to, to uh, acknowledge that it's by my strength that I'm here, mm. but because by the grace of God, people go through stuff and it is God that brings them out of it. Mm. And I really thank God yeah. because this was the best timing, mm -hmm. especially after you shared about Mago. Okay, yes. beautiful. Nice yeah. to have you here. Thank you. Please introduce yourself to our audience. Okay, my name is Martha. Uh, I'm a gospel artist. Yeah. Uh, I'm known as Martha Rena. Yes. It's not my real name. Yeah. I have real names. Yes. My real names are Martha Wangoi. Yeah. And I really thank God because I've been singing uh, since um, since um, it's been 15 years oh, wow. since I recorded my first song. Yeah. And it's well known. Yes. Yeah. It's called. Uh, maybe I can mention it. Yes, mention it. Please. Okay. It's called Nafsi Yangu ya Kungoja Buana. Okay. Kuliko Alenzi Wangoja Vya Subuhi. Can you sing something for us? Yes, go, I can. Go on. Okay. Uh -huh. Nafsi Yangu ya Kungoja Buana. Kuliko walinzi, wango javyo asubuhi. Yeah. When I just say that, most people get recognized. It is, yes, personally, yes. I, I, it's a song that people hear, but yeah. I don't think they know this is the face yeah, this is behind the face. that yes. beautiful voice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, I'm a born-again Christian, mm -hmm. and then I'm a former pastor's wife, yeah. uh, currently divorced. I'm a mother of one. And I am a third born in a family of four children. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I look at you. There's so much grace. Thank you. We were just speaking a few minutes before this interview. Yeah. And we almost went into this whole theory yes. when we were talking about your dad. And yeah. I know we will get there. Yeah. But you say, mm. if that's the role, mm. having a father. Yes. If just having a father meant him playing this role in your life, yes. that's enough. Yes. I don't want to jump the ship. Yeah. So I want to just be very silent. Okay. If you could take us back to your story, mm. you know, growing up. Yes. Then meeting this man mm. and why mm. this whole brainwashing mm. almost messed your life up. Yes. And how by God's grace you came out of it because mother, let me tell you. Yes. When we go back to the story of that Nigerian woman. Yes. And she cried so much yeah. in silence. Yeah. And no one knew. Yeah. I look at you and I'm like, God, yeah. no matter how tough the test is, yes. this woman is still alive. I I thank God for that, yeah. actually. I wake up in the morning, I don't look at, at what I don't have. I look at life and I lift my hands and thank God. Yeah. First of all, I want to encourage people. When you see someone divorced, when you see someone single, either divorced or just single with a child or without, mm. do not judge because most people are not there by choice, especially the divorced people. You don't just wake up one day and walk out of your marriage. Yeah. It does not happen. Yeah. It is something you have thought about. Yes. You've looked at the pros. You've looked at the cons. You've looked at the impact, especially if you have children. You've looked at those children and done all your math in your head. And you've seen that this is the only way out. Yeah. Going back to my story, um, maybe people will understand that as we go on. Mm -hmm. So I grew up, I was born in a family of four. Yeah. Both my parents are alive by the grace of God. Yes. But my dad uh, was a pastor. He still is a pastor. Yeah. But he used to work with uh, one of the pastors in Nairobi, still doing well, mm -hmm. that man of God. Mm -hmm. And my dad was like, um, I would say an accountant, yes. uh, but he was part of the pastoral team. Mm -hmm. I share this story as we've been told by his friends. Okay. Not like from an account I can really confirm mm. by myself. Mm -hmm. So my dad uh, fell out with this bishop. Mm. When he fell out with the bishop, he was running away for his life. So when he was leaving us, it was not something he would have wanted to do. You see another case of a separation yes. that was not really the, the will and the desire of these people. Mm. So we are told that my dad was just running away for his life because they had fell out completely. completely. And my mom once told us that she had looked for him 
for around six months. Yes. She didn't know where he was. So she would wake up and I have memories of that, very little. My mom would wake up, leave and go and say that in the evening, I have no idea. So later, my grandfather's family, my father's family, yes. they told us that they used to hold hands asking God for my dad's body. <laughs> like wherever he is, bring him back to us, we will bury. So for, for around six years or so, no one knew where he was. So you can see this little girl is now finding herself in a family where it's not stable, yes. you know, from the time she's discovering herself, mm -hmm. it's not stable. So she's out there trying to understand what is life? What is not life? What is love? What is parental love, you know? And what is not? So I grew up in such a situation. Yes. And when we were young, we were moved a lot. So when dad left, my mom took us to her mom's place. And when we went to her mom's place, there were two other kids, my mm. cousins. So mm. we were six. Mm. So you can imagine grandparents raising six children who are below 12. Mm. So you see how yeah, tough that was. So there was no love. You don't remember like being embraced. It's just you wake up, do this, do mm. this, do this. Mm. So this girl is growing in a place where it's so empty. And from a very tender age, I was desiring to know God for myself because I knew this life. There is no way I'll make it if it is not someone that is divine that will carry me through. Mm. And at this point, you don't know what next. You don't know where else you're going. You don't know how long your grandparents will be alive, you know? So it's that traumatic childhood that I'm coming from. And at one point, my grandfather was a, he was huge on alcohol yeah. and maybe he had his own problems. Mm. It's not personal mm. with us. Mm. So at one point he just wakes up and says, these children, we need to build them a house elsewhere. Like they just need to leave. They just need to go. So the next thing we find out is that we are being moved again. Wow. We are moving from my grandfather's mm -hmm. house mm -hmm. to my paternal grandfather's house. And my paternal grandfather was way older and he was way sickly. And, but he wanted us to be with him yeah. because we belong to his son. Mm. And he didn't have a wife. My grandmother had died way before. Mm -hmm. I'm told just after I was born around mm -hmm. there, she had passed on. Mm -hmm. So we were now into this place and we are living with uh, my grandfather and a house boy. Mm -hmm. Again, that this life where you're trying to discover what is life, who are you, where. I like to give my childhood uh, background because it's such traumas that can lead you to make some decisions that you you wonder how did i how did i, I do did, that yeah. but when you look at it closely you mm. are looking for something mm. you are looking for be a belonging that didn't happen you are looking for answers that eventually didn't come you know so we were raised by my grandfather the biggest thing my grandfather did for us he gave us a good education and I am grateful, forever grateful, because he took us to the best boarding school. We were in boarding school uh, by class six mm. with my sister. Mm. And my uh, younger brother came through after that, my mm. big brother also. Mm -hmm. So he took us to a very good school. Yeah. And that's where I took it upon myself to teach myself how to, to, how to speak, you know. How to communicate with people. Yeah. That's the, the place I taught myself. Because you say are it. a beautiful oh. communicator. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's the education that my grandfather gave us. Yes. And he participated in that with my uncles. Yeah. So he, he made sure that we had everything we needed in boarding school. You can imagine a very old man. He's, he can barely walk. He can barely see. But he's ensuring that before he goes to be with the Lord, these children will have the best. Beautiful. Bless him. If that is not God, Lynn, then I don't know. Because that's God. That's God. Because he's already securing your, your future mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. And after that, my grandfather, he passed on yeah. while we were in class six. Mm. 
just after we had joined boarding school, after mm -hmm. the first term, he passed on, but he left that great legacy. Like in my heart, I always thank God when I remember him yeah. because he ensured that we will have the best education that we would have desired. Mm -hmm. So now this girl continues to grow. You see, now we've come into this place where we are almost settling down. Yes. Like, yeah, grandpa, you know, love. We have what we need and all that. He's spoiling us good. And then he's gone. Once he's gone, most of the time we come back home from school, there's no one. <laughs> you go for the key to the neighbor's houses, come open, panga yourself. Mm. What are we eating? Mm. What are we drinking, mm. you know? And at this point, my mom was working in Naivasha yeah. and my grandpa's is Nakuru. Oh. So she would also come to visit yes. during the holidays. Mm. So she would come be with us during the holidays. And then once we go back to school, she'll go back to work. Mm. So you can see this childhood. It's very lonely. Yeah. It's surrounded but lonely. And it's it's a childhood that is painful but not painful. Good. Because you're 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 looking out. You you want to find out who am I? Why am I here? Um what is love? That is the question. And who is God? That those are the two questions yes. that kept pushing me. Yeah. So after now my grandpa is dead and my mom now came and resigned because she was like, My children cannot be staying this alone all the time. My uncles had made arrangements where a cousin would come, mm -hmm. uh, move move schools and come and teach in a school nearby mm -hmm. so that she'll be with us. Mm -hmm. But it came to a point where it was not possible. Mm -hmm. So my mom resigned. Mm -hmm. And thank God, when my grandfather passed on, he left a will and said, nobody should kick this woman out wow. of my house. Wow. So to date, the place I call home in Nakuru is my grandfather who left us. Wow. And if it was not for that, I don't know where we would be. But God had secured that. Amen. So primary school is over. Uh, performed how we did with my sister. And now we, we secured a high school, mm. a girl's high school. Mm -hmm. So this girl is continuing to. So in primary school, I joined the CU. Yeah. And I was, I don't remember if I was made the, the, the prayer coordinator or the chair lady, yeah. something. Yeah. So I'd given my life to Christ. Then I told God, I want to serve you. I want to know you for myself because the way life is going, I cannot do it by myself. And I cannot, I cannot, I cannot lead life not knowing yes. what the future is yes. and just be by myself. Mm -hmm. So it continued like that into high school, CU chair lady, um, music coordinator, you know, from one, from two, yeah. from three, from four, yeah. CU chair lady. And life went on like that with all the struggles, the school fees struggles, because now in high school is my mm -hmm. uncles, every mm -hmm. other uncle is contributing. Mm -hmm. And by the grace of God, I thank God for my extended yes. family yes. because they made sure that these children have gone through school Beautiful. at least until form four. Mm. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Mm. So once we finished, uh, we cleared uh, the fourth form with my sister. So my dad was not able to take my brothers to college and all that. So it was just my sister and I. Mm. So we got placement in Kenya Utali College, oh. nice college. Yes through my cousin. Again, it was a family thing, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> people just working together. Mm -hmm. So my sister and I went to college. Mm -hmm. We did a short course, mm -hmm. uh, front office. And I thank God for that. Yeah. And I really honor God because of that opportunity. Mm -hmm. After clearing, now that's when we went separate, separate ways. Yeah. And when we went separate ways, I got a job in one of the hotels. Mm -hmm. After, after persevering, mm -hmm. you know, internship, you know, all that process. By the grace of God, I got a job in one of the hotels. Yeah. And that's where now I, I began to discover who is Martha. What would Martha want? And that's when, when I'm at the reception, I, I would, I would, I would um, tune into music stations yes. that have music. Yeah. And I was singing so loud, you know when you're just alone and when guests would come, they're like, is that you singing? Yeah. That's good. D don't let it go. So that's wow. how my music talent Grew. began to grow mm. at that point. And it's at that point I felt, by the way, I can sing. I can sing. I can give it a try. So that's a story for another day. Yeah. And that's how now my yes. my talent began to, to grow. Mm. And I thank God that so far by his grace, 
I'm yet to tap fully, Amen. but I'll get there. We we'll, we soldier on. Yes, we yeah. we soldier on. Yeah. So now after that, uh, well, after this, um, getting this job, it got to a point where, after doing nafsiangu, invitations were so many. Meru, Narok, you know, uh, Kibera, you know, every other place, every other place. You needed this Sunday. We have a crusade on Wednesday. Come, da, 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 da. Sing. Come sing. And I was like, I, I think it's not balancing enough because in my job, I was working up to Sundays mm -hmm. sometimes. So I was like, I think I'm going to give this thing a mm -hmm. try. I resigned. Yeah. After resigning, everyone was shocked because they were like, oh, you're good in your job. Da, da, da. I was like, let me go and follow this thing. It was burning inside me. And I thank God I did that because mm. I learned a lot about music that season than I would have learned sitting down. And it's good to, to point out that I don't encourage people to resign. Mm. Don't resign from your job mm. because you have a talent of music. Mm. Don't resign from your job because uh, you feel called yes. and you feel gifted. Yeah. You need that income to establish other areas mm -hmm. of your life. Mm -hmm. So don't do as I say. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so that was a very personal decision mm -hmm. that I wouldn't enforce on every other person. Okay. So I started mm -hmm. moving. I went to Rwanda, I went to Uganda, I went to all these other places. Meru, you know, I, I Nafsiyangu. I usually tell people I use that season to the best. Amen. To the best. Sometimes you gotta recognize a season. Yes, yes, yes. So now I'm done with uh, moving all over the place yes. and all that. So one time I am planning to, I was planning to go to Zanzibar mm -hmm. to sing. Mm -hmm. I had, in, I had been invited. Yes. And it's good to mention that all these places I was going by bus. Rwanda, Burundi, like I had a passport and I was yes. like, air tickets, it's, it's not a big deal. Yes. So I, I traveled and traveling is my hobby. Yeah. So I really took good use of that. Yeah. So one time I'm supposed to travel to uh, Zanzibar, Zanzibar and there was this pastor, a very close friend of mine. And this pastor had known me through Nafsiangu mm -hmm. and he had invited me to his church yeah. and he used to call himself a prophet. Yes. It was called Prophet Kibe. Yeah. He invited me to his church and several times I had gone to sing and I had taken my music friends to, to go and sing. Yeah. And anytime you go there, you, you get a word, a yes. word of knowledge. You know how these things excite Christians. So I'm like, come, come, I'll take you somewhere and you'll get a word, yeah. you know. So innocently, I would take people, they would be prayed for and their lives would change in their own unique ways mm. that they themselves can, can mm. explain. Mm. So for me, I, he would tell me things that I was going through and that really captured me. Like um, one time I was to go to Sudan, I'd been invited to Sudan to go yeah. and sing. Yeah. And I had a dream going to Sudan, it's like I would get an accident or something. So before I shared it with him, this man calls me mm. and tells me, don't go to Sudan. There's going to be war. By that season, there may be war. They're, they've already started fighting, but it may affect you in your journey. Mm -hmm. So don't go. Mm. So you see, he confirmed what was yes. in my heart. So I canceled. So that's the kind of people I wanted to associate with. I say that just to, to give a background. Mm. Like I wanted to cling to such a person that can give me counsel and advice uh, that is godly. Yeah. So it comes a point where he tells me there is a woman of God from South Africa. I want you to meet. And this woman of God, so by this time, you know, he's like a dad to me. And he, he goes like, this woman, you will love her. She's gifted. She's anointed. And that's what every Christian wants to hear when yes. they're going for a meeting somewhere. Yes. She's gifted, she's anointed, she's a prophetess. I want you to meet her and you can get to judge for yourself. So he tells me, the coming Sunday, where are you ministering? Mm -hmm. I told him somewhere at Thicker Road. Mm -hmm. And he goes like, because you can't make it for the morning service, I'll pick you in town and I'll be with the woman of God in the car and we'll go to a fellowship in Loresho. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's a good plan. So after ministering in Thicker Road, Came all the way to town, they picked me up, and we went to Loresho. Mm. And in the car, this woman 
I, she kept looking at me. I was sitting on the back left. She would, she would turn and say, you're such a worshiper. Imagine that would surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> like I've been a worshiper yes. for like five years yes. at this point. You're such a worshiper and you're going places. And I'm like, my God, that's what I want. Professor to go places. Yes. <laughs> so she goes like, you will minister to nations, young girl. The moment you enter this car, the, the spirit of worship filled the atmosphere. Yes. So I know I'm a worshiper. I kneel yes. down in the house. Yes. Like me and God, I've learned to pour my heart out to him because he's been the one, you know my yes. story. Yes. He's been God in my life. And I love to outpour everything I have unto him. Mm -hmm. But that surprised me. <laughs> <laughs> so it caught me so hard. And, and then she goes like, you will go to nations. Let's go to the fellowship. We will minister. Yes. We will talk more when mm. there. And in this fellowship, this woman has a son, spiritual son, okay? And she she has, it's like this guy is in the fellowship that day. So all the way from town to Loresho, me and a professor, you are too, you know? Eh. You go to, I'm excited like, this is the clique I want. Yes. This is the type of people I want I'm to walk. I'm in the right crowd. I'm in the right crowd, yes. Lynn. And we have to go to the nations. Hey. The nations we are coming. Amen. <laughs> so, getting to the fellowship, there was this guy in the fellowship. And just when we were entering and sitting down to have a cup of tea, this woman tells me, you need to get married. Hold on. You met this woman a few minutes ago. few minutes ago. She has prophesied to you. She has prophesied nations. You, nations. Yes. Then this woman, you just sat and is telling you you need to get married. You need to get married, Martha. What? How old are you? I told her, 24. She says, you, you need to get married. And I, in my head, I'm like, I've never wanted to get married until I'm 28. It, you know how the, you set goals in growing up? Like, by 28, I want to have achieved this and this and this. Yes. And here I am. I've not done most of that. But I'm already being told I'm getting married. I need to get married. And because it's the prophet of God that is speaking, you know, you start rearranging stuff in your head. By the way, I was to get married at 28. I think we can, we can shorten that. 24 looks good. Yeah, 24 looks good. So I think getting married is not bad. Yeah. And in this fellowship, this guy sits across so i'm on that side with the prophetess and he sits across and starts looking at me and then in that conversation he said i have met my wife oh what i've met my wife that was the most confusing fellowship i have ever been how about una rearrange 28 to 24 you know you're doing lots of math in your head like i can get married and you know and then someone already is saying i've met my wife and i'm like hey this is too much for me and i didn't want anything to do with him and he starts speaking in tongues uh -uh. yes i have met my wife i have met my wife i have met my wife and i'm like goodness this fellowship should end i need to go home <laughs> Now when he's saying he's met his wife, yeah. how is your pastor, friend, the prophet, now the guy? He's interacting with, with other ad people. And where is this prophetess from South Africa? She's somehow next to me. So it's, she can hear this she can guy hear. saying, I have met my wife. Yes. And the guy is her spiritual son. son. So, so they, they already have a connection. They already, they already know connection. each other. They already know each other. And the same day you meet this prophetess is the same day yes. the son will say, I have met my wife and start shakarara. Yes. Away. Imagine same day you're, you're being told nations. Same day you're being told uh, you need to get married. Same day uh, I, have met, I have met my wife. That was a confusing day. And... When the fellowship ended, during the fellowship, I remember she, she prayed for me. I don't know what she prayed about, but I remember her laying hands on me. And all of a sudden, this guy is just, you know, there is, is like a room, like uh, a big room. Yes. 
and everyone is a fellowship of like 15 people yeah. so people are praying all over the place but i can hear this guy is praying somewhere close to me and prophetess is laying hands on me you know it was very confusing and after the fellowship the guy comes to me i have met my wife and i thank god that i have met you and in my head i'm like i'm not your wife thank you but the fear like this is too much this could be god but how do i know <laughs> you know how do i know marriage is not something you've been thinking about up to this point and all of a sudden it's something you have to really you know try to deconstruct and all that so the pastor who drove me to that place with prophetess offers to drop me home and this time he asks the guy to join him so i'm assuming the back seat it's future wife and this guy front seat back seat was myself yes i asked him to aka ukombele aka ukombele oh man cuz eh. so the 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 pastor yes. the guy and myself yes back left all the way to my place this guy is speaking in tongues speaks in tongues looks back says i have met my wife continues speaking in tongues clapping you know like rejoicing and i'm like goodness i have never seen anything like this i've just met you since adam and eve did <laughs> <laughs> like i don't even know who you are yes. i don't know where you come from and you're calling me your wife and that was confusing i went home when they dropped me uh pastor kibe said my daughter i'll see you soon call me tomorrow if it's okay we can meet and we'll get to talk about today yes. i was like yeah i'll call you so when i got home switched off my phone and slept like confused i didn't even pray about anything i slept morning kwamka i tried calling you i tried calling you like six times and it's the guy i had taken his number pastor had asked me save this guy's number so you see how so i tried calling i tried call, so i called him back and he's like um martha i would like us to meet because there's something very special i want to tell you of course you know um i have an idea what he wants to tell me mm. but i'm like what happens to dating knowing someone courting someone you yes. know all yes. that let's and have fun yeah you know let's have fun let's know each other and i was like okay when would you want to meet me and he's like next week on tuesday i told him i'm going to zanzibar this this week and unless we talk once i'm back and i'll let you know once i'm back and as i went to zanzibar my facebook was flooded inbox i can't wait for you to come back i miss you i miss you there's something i want to tell you that was the most confusing and then before i went to zanzibar Pastor Kibe calls me and tells me, "Did you see what happened?" And he laughs. I'm like, "Yeah, I saw what happened." And he's like, "Begin loving him. Begin loving him." Oh, Martha. How have you saved him on your phone? I said, "I've saved his name." Yeah. And he's like, "Could you change that and call it my prince?" That's pastor telling me that. Lin that was the most confusing season wow. of my life that's abuse yeah now looking back yes yes and i was so naive and remember i've grown up not having attention you see trauma there we go i've grown up not knowing like someone following up on what i'm doing it was always about school grandfather grandmother So there is this part of me uh, it's nowadays that I'm trying to deconstruct what that was all about. That loneliness that I grew up with took advantage, I would say it took advantage of my naivety. And I gave in to stuff I would not have. But when I look at it at a positive side, if I went through it for someone to learn and for someone not to go through it then it was worth it it's well it is well so 
I went to Zanzibar. Facebook. Facebook inbox. I can't wait for you to come back. Now I've saved in my prints. I don't know what kind of prints he is. Wow. Coming back, I, I, I texted him on Facebook and told him I'll be back on this and this day. I can't really remember the exact, like it was a Monday or whatever, but I told him I'll be back on this day. We can catch up after two days so that I'll have rested. Came back all the way by bus from Zanzibar to, to Nairobi, all the way to my place. I used to live on Waiyaki Way. All the way, rested a whole day. And the next day, uh, after a few days, um, we get to meet up. And the guy is like, the day I saw you, I knew that you're my wife. Hmm. And I want you to start um, embracing this fact because God told me that you're my wife. God told him. That's what he told me. Oh. God told him. And in my head, I'm like, this God needs to talk to me as well. Because this is about my life. Mm -hmm. This is not about your life. It's about me also. He needs to talk to me. And I cannot say, Lynn, that God told me, this is your husband from heaven. You know, there is nothing like that that happened. But God filled my heart with peace. And with peace, I knew it is well with my soul. <laughs> it's not something I can tell someone, run with peace. No. Go dig. Who is he? Who are his people? You know? What was their family like? Imagine at this point, I have no idea who his mother is, who his, you know, where he comes from. Nothing. But I chose to to walk with this peace. And the prophetess and the pastor are now in this. In this. And when I look back today, I know beyond doubt, prophetess had mentioned, I'm coming to this meeting. Pastor had mentioned to her, there is a girl coming. That's how I look at it right now. And she knew maybe there is a son of hers who, who needs someone. That's how I look at it today. And she decided, this is it. I have the CV of this girl from Pastor. And Pastor has this guy's CV from Prophetess. You know, that's how I look at it today. Such and a that, setup. Exactly. It's a setup. No word can better describe it. It's a it. setup. It's a setup. And there are people in church. Just because your man of God has said someone is suitable for you and you run for it because MOG has said this is my spouse and you don't take your time due diligence who is this man who is this woman just because God has spoken does not mean that you two are no yeah. no and sometimes it's not like God has spoken, you know, God has spoken. Yes. But is this man of God that has felt like this and this the best, mm. you know? Mm. And most people in church are getting lost in that. And you find that someone is not taking time to know what are the weaknesses of this person? How is his anger like? You know those things you just, those that says the Lord yes. covers them? Yes. Who is he? Did he grow up in a single mother family? What are the traumas what he's experiencing? What are the traumas he's experiencing? You get it. What is the childhood he's trying to overcome? What are his battles? What are his battles? Because you could just be coming mm. in as a numbing, you know? Mm -hmm. You are the medicine that will numb that thing. Whoa. But it will never go. Yes. It will keep popping yeah. up. You numb it today as a wife. Tomorrow it pops up yes. in another way. And you get in yourself into a very toxic situation. Absolutely. And you're blaming everyone, but you didn't do your due diligence. That's why I'm here to talk to people. Because I did not. At this point, I'm told there is an engagement. In whose church? Pastor's church. Pastor Kibe. The Kibe guy. Yes. There is an engagement. I think uh, coming Sunday. Um, and... That engagement, I'll have, I'll be. Hey, yeah. hold on. 
Now let's work with the timeline here. This is too fast. Yeah. By the time you met this guy, this is my wife, this is my wife. Mm -hmm. To the time they are saying there's going to be an engagement. Mm -hmm. How many years had passed? It was less than a month. Allow me to ask. Yeah. You know, as a woman, there's the kind of man you want. Let's even go to the surface level admiration. How this person looks. Yeah. Does he clean up nice? How is, does he talk? How can we vibe? Because for me, if we can't have a conversation, like if we can't talk for hours and hours without me getting bored, yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If this person cannot sustain a conversation, beautiful yeah. way, I feel I'm home, it's peaceful, I can be with this person every day, I'm out. Yeah. So to you, first let's go to the looks. Mm -hmm. Was he your type? No. <laughs> the behavior. Did you even get to understand any? No. I was riding on the fact that he's a pastor. What? Yeah. God, I have chills right now. Yeah. Because I was like, with a pastor, you're safe. He's a man of God. He's a man of God. He tries to touch you. God tells him, you dare. <laughs> you know, he those, knows. those things we have in the air that are not real. Yeah. Like, he... he this is, an, this is someone that can hear God. So in a month, now you're heading to your engagement. Yeah. Are you telling your family? Good question. Of course, man, me, I'll be going to my sister, I'll be like, she calls in nini. I will be like, are you talking to your sister? Yeah. Are you telling any of your siblings? What happened? After now, uh, I'm now beginning to follow them uh, when they are going to preach, you know? These two were a pair. The prophetess and emoji and remember she's coming from south africa yeah so she comes to conduct meetings with some kenyan people it was a fellowship yeah. it it crashed like yes. crashed way after and i felt like i need to follow them up wherever they go so anytime uh that time i would hear there is a meeting there is a meeting of pastors i think along gong road mm -hmm. and the guy would tell me come join us tomorrow mm -hmm. Prophetess wants you to be with us. So I would go following and, and getting to find out what, how do these people behave, you know? And every other meeting out, I could see there is God here. There is God here. God's presence was God's there. God's presence is here. And I, it's like I use that to numb questions, to, to, to suppress questions I had. And my sister got wind of it. I don't remember if I'm the one who told her or someone told her first. But at one point I shared with her, do you know my sister started telling me, you are doing wrong. I know that woman. She's a con. Martha, don't go into this. And in my head I'm like, you are an enemy. Oh, ma. How can you attack a servant of God like that? This is a prophetess. This is a prophetess. She's saying she's a con? Yeah, you're calling her a con. You cannot do that to me. Go try that elsewhere. And my sister did everything to break us apart, Lynn. From the time we met to the time we got married, it was 10 months. 10 months. I'll never forget that. We met in June 2011. We got married in April, Good Friday. 2012. 2012. That's not even a year. And my sister did everything to bring us apart. When he organized a dowry, of course, through me going to negotiate. Yes. Imagine I even negotiated uh, for the amount he would, you know, Draw. as a good girl. Yeah. Like, we are going far with this guy, mom. Do something. Be very kind to him. Don't let him be pressed down by, by the men, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the parents. Yes. yes. So my sister went and tried to cut, cut off that mm -hmm. dowry ceremony. Mm -hmm. So let's go back a little. Yeah. So I'm told there is an engagement ceremony in Pastor Kibe's church. And when we go to Pastor Kibe's church, I'll be given a ring, an engagement ring. I look back and I laugh at myself, the naivety. But my dad is a pastor. Sometimes I think I was looking for my father. And it made me, you know, 
I was like blind, like this is what I want. So when the engagement day comes, I call my friends, we go, then in the morning service, we sing, we minister, you know, music. It just makes you very happy and excited. And then in the afternoon, Prophetess is coming to preach and he's coming with her son, my prince, and there's going to be an engagement. So, <laughs> this is very funny when I remember. So Prophetess starts preaching. And I'm like, when she's preaching, I'm just looking, who is this woman? I can't An admiration. Even tell you. Yeah. Pure admiration. Yes. But there is something, there's a hunch. I can't really, you know, there's that kind of thing. Yeah. And you keep pushing it away like, yes. just, this is a man yes. of God. This is a woman of God. So she's preaching. I'm just looking. I look at how she's dressed. Gorgeous, you know, nails, gorgeous hair. God. And I'm lost. And I'm waiting for my engagement in this. Imagine being engaged in a church service. So I wait. They start praying for people. They are praying for people. And I noticed every time she's praying for people, my prince is following her. She's, he's like the right hand person of this woman. So they're praying, they're praying and all that. And then I'm like, oh my gosh. It's almost 7 p.m. People are still being prayed for. And I came for an engagement. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I cannot stop this service. People's, God's people need to be delivered. Yes. You know, they need to be prayed for. This is not about me. But when will it end? So I wait, I wait. And at one point, my musician friends, we were four, they start leaving. They come tap me. And I told one of them, who's a girl, I told her, today is my engagement service. And she laughed. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone is leaving. Mm. She's almost leaving and I told her, just wait a little. Yeah. So we went outside and I took an asha and I told her, you see that guy that's laying hands on people with the prophetess? Go and tell him Martha wants to go. So the Asha didn't get what I said. Mm. She went and called him. Mm. <laughs> My priest comes out and he's like, Kwanini umenitua service? Kwanini umenitua service? And I'm like, engagement. In my head, like, wasn't today the day? And I, I was so confused. I told him, it's okay. I need to go. Imekua usiku, acha miniende. It's fine. But kuna kitu ulikuwa umeongea about. And I, I, I thought it was today. So I was like, Goja kwanza tumalize maombi. Let's finish the prayer first. I'll yes. talk to you. Wow. And I left. Nilingia kwa basilin. I cried. I was like, <laughs> that was supposed to be my engagement. And I'm, I'm lost. Like, what am, what am I getting myself into? I'm not a priority here. This is about these two. I'm not, it's not, I'm not the, you I'm know. I'm not anywhere. Yeah, I'm not anywhere. So anyway, mm. I went home, mm -hmm. slept, and the following day he calls me and tells me, we'll meet in town on Wednesday. And when we met in town, that's when I got my <laughs> engagement ring. How, like? <laughs> <laughs> he took it, he took it out of, of a box. Mm. And he's like, is, is this the kind you'd want? Like, I'm like, is it end up badly, by the way? My own. Whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> what? In my head, I knew we're going to nations with this guy, Lin. Wherever he is in life, I don't care. Do you know he gave me that ring, Niliji Valisha? I was like, I'm good. Niliji Valisha. And that's how my engagement happened. Wow. And from there, we meet every other day. And most of those days, let's just say I'm the one who is paying the bills. I didn't know how to value myself. Atakamani is chips of a hundred shillings, you know. I didn't see him having the need to take care of that. I'll do it most of the time. And when he comes and says, oh, today I can do it. So it was not a big deal because Lynn, we are going to nations with this guy. Whoa. 
we are going to nations. And he has a destiny. That's what Pastor Kibe used to tell me. The kind of destiny that this man of God carries. You people will go far. And that's where I was lost. So you are Nafuata. Big plans. Yes. Okay. Nafuata ile plan future. Mm -hmm. And that's what most of us do. But there is the balance of what is what is the ideal, you know? Where we are in life. Can we sit down? Yeah, to Naenda Nations, my sister. Yes. But this is the plan. This, this is, is the plan that will take to us nation. to the nations. Yeah. So you guys, you already arrived. We've already arrived. Without the journey. By the power of the Holy Spirit. We have arrived. We are there. And whoever is trying to come in between us. Is an enemy. Is an enemy to this great destiny. And that is where I lost Martha. At 25 now. Yeah. That's where I lost Martha. But I'm getting her back. That's why I lost her. My sister became my enemy, number one. Imagine it's now, 10 years later, that we are mending our relationship with my sister. She became my enemy. She became the voice of the enemy in our marriage. The Dembo. Yes. And I remember one point telling my ex, that let me call him my prince because that was oh, telling see. my prince my sister says this woman is a con woman can you please explain that to me and he was like i am going to pray and i will stop her she will stop attacking the anointed of god she will stop do you know now that got me into fear like hey leave my sister don't hurt her you see the kind of fear you're walking in an intimidation, very high intimidation. And so after like two days, prophetess writes me on Facebook from South Africa. And she tells me, we are fasting for three days to bring your sister down. She texted me and I'm like, goodness, I did not want to get into this to hurt my people, you know, for people that I love to get hurt. And I was, I just went silent. From there, I said, whatever my sister tells me, stays with me. I'll not share with anyone, but I'll keep it in my heart. And I thank God that she continued to feed me with stuff. And years later, one plus one. One her. plus one. Was two. Yes. I, I kept ticking. I knew this. I was told this. I was warned. I was warned. And I thank God mm -hmm. I'm mending my relationship with my sister mm -hmm. right now. That's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So November yeah. the 5th, yeah. dowry, 2011. I have those days like I cannot forget dowry. So I go home and he sends some cash like how they're they are supposed to and to sponsor that event. Yeah. So I go prepare stuff. and. I go telling women, uh, please come help me. This is my mom talks to people and anybody we talk to, my sister goes and talks to them. <laughs> <laughs> and tells them, you're not supposed to come. She's getting into a mistake. She's messing up with her life. So the women who came are those who came to seek a second opinion from me. Like, are you sure this is what you need? Yeah. Do you need our help? And like five, six of them came and helped me. And the event happened. Mm. And my sister was absent. She was just walking all over the place. Like she, she didn't want to get involved. Hands off, completely. Serving guests, whatever. Nothing. Nothing. And looking back, I'm like, oh my goodness, she was right. She was right. But she's my elder sister. Mm. So I was like. You thought you are you are you are the voice of the enemy in this. Yes. Don't leave me alone. So now, when I got married uh, from November, now he's planning for the wedding. Yes. There is no money. There is no money for the wedding, and yet prophetess just keeps saying, "You guys will have the biggest wedding. Your wedding will shake the city of Nairobi. It will shake the city." And I'm like. Send us the money. Thank you. In my head, 
Because I'm like, you're speaking so big, but the guy has no money. I don't have money like I had kept, like this is, this is my saving. Mm -hmm. I don't. I've just been ministering all over the place. Yes. And there's no money for the wedding. Mm -hmm. So we continued planning, borrowing left, right, center. And the more we hit targets through borrowed money, Borrowing money, borrowing money, borrowing. Prophetess just, is just keeping tabs with us. Like, so far, have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Da, da, da. And then she got to a point where she said, uh, I'll buy the, the gown and the, and the suit. And then all of a sudden, I'll not buy the gown, I'll buy the suit. So again, Martha has to look for money for the gown. I don't have the gown. Luckily, I posted on Facebook, I'm getting married. So as the celebrity of Napsi Yango, yes. you know, people are like, yeah, we, we can come through. Oh, wow. You get a thousand from here, a thousand from there. You reach out to people, you borrow money, you know. My Napsi Yango thing really came through that season. And luckily, there is a lady from America. She said, oh, the girl is getting married. She sent me a gown. Wow. All the way. And... In those seasons, looking back, I saw God just reaching out to me and encouraging me that it is well. And that was one of those. Like, it is well. You don't have to worry about the gown anymore. It is well. So April came, mm. April the 6th, 2012. Yes. We get married. Do you know Prophetess is our best couple? And they jetted in the day before the wedding. You know the role of a best couple, Lynn? Yeah. What's your sex life like? You know, finances. Who are you? You know how best couple should yes. really be there? Yes. I never saw that. They jet yesterday. They today jet is the yesterday. Wedding. Today, today is the wedding. And even with all the phone calls that we can make and all that, there's nothing we are speaking about us. It's just the future that you guys have. You are destined for greatness. The destiny. Like this girl is, you are a gift to this man. And this man is a gift to you. The destiny you guys have will shake nations. And mother was so in love with those words. And there was no plan. How are these nations going to be shaken? Nothing. You're getting in married, into marriage so empty. You don't know. Even matters, bedroom matters, nothing. Uko green. Uko green. This is not something I've tried before. Like you're green. You don't know anything. Ma. You are clueless. The guy seems clueless. I'm and telling you, Lynn, it was, it was a mess. And all the best cups. So the prophetess also had a husband. Yes. But... All she kept saying was, your destiny. Yes. Now, All we are talking about is destiny. Yes. And how great we are. So you are 25 now. Yeah. And your prince? Same. Same, same age. Yes, same okay. age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we get into marriage. Yeah. Honeymoon was a mess. I don't even want to talk about that. It was a mess. After coming back from the honeymoon, the house is empty. You are sitting on the floor. You know, this girl knows the destiny of this guy. We are sitting on the floor and I would ask him, what's the plan? Like, you know, so far, so far said, kuna are 10,000, 5,000. But I noticed, let's go to the wedding day first. You see this money that people give the yes, couple? Yes. And that's the money you're supposed to plan yourself yes, with. Big. Like, how are we going to use this money mm -hmm. during the honeymoon? Mm -hmm. And coming back from the honeymoon, how are we going to use it? And do you know, my prince told me that he had promised God that he was going to tithe 15% of that money to prophetess. And then I think give some seed, appreci appreciation yes. seed yes. to prophetess. So we went to the honeymoon basically with no money because you've... Tithed and you have yeah. sworn a seed. And a red flag I saw, as we were opening the envelopes, she was standing, looking. How much? How much? What? She's like, she's there. And I'm like, in my head, I was like, this is supposed to be us. Yeah. She should not be here. And I'm, then you're like, 
whatever it's this okay is the of god so off to the honeymoon back no furniture nothing so i'm like we will start from zero i knew there was no furniture before but you know it's good to tell me like after the honeymoon this is what we're yes. going to do yes. so no plan nothing sitting on the floor nothing and i notice there are partners that are involved in emoji's life my ex mm. these partners they are the ones who've been sponsoring his life because he doesn't work because he doesn't work he doesn't have like a no he, he just uh does the word yes he just does ministry yes he just goes around preaching mm -hmm. and then these partners are the ones who are supporting everything that he does oh so now that i'm in the picture we are now relying on partners because i'm also i don't i don't have a job i've been ministering all over the place as a singer i don't have a job back to my original don't let go of your job because because you have this yes. great vision yes. yeah so we don't have we both are not working and we are sitting on the floor and when i try to find out like what's your plan what's your plan well, what are we planning about where we are in six months time if we'll bring a baby into this marriage right now where will the baby lie mm. where will guests be sitting there was nothing it was silent but anytime partners call they send in money in a day you would find that we are getting like three phone calls of partners they get prayed for they are asked for a seat and like yes. you need to sow a seat for the next level that you're going da, 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 da. the first few months he would talk to them uh, closed up in the bedroom so i reached out to prophetess and i told her please ask him to stop doing that it's annoying me if there's nothing you're hiding stay here on the lounge and talk to them as i do my work mm. i'll not interfere mm. so he started now that's when i would hear uh, yeah. you need to succeed you know for your next level uh, now that we have prayed da, 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 da. so that's how he used to get money and when these partners send money when it lands into his hands a big chunk of it goes to south africa to the prophetess to the prophetess so kumbe he has been given his targets by prophetess like you're going through you're going to go in the next six months god will open this huge door you know you need to sow a seed of this and this every other week now this is the life i've yes. brought myself into every other week so this and this yeah. so he receives money mm. god is providing mm. as faithful as he is mm. he's providing through these partners but when the money comes we are not talking about the couch we are not talking about the the kitchen we are not talking about beddings and all that nice curtains we are talking about prophetess so money would come prophetess money would come prophetess and any time i would question he would say, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. If there is a scripture that has silenced me, lean is that one. Touch not. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Yes. But looking back right now, I am anointed. God. That has healed me. Yes. And God could be telling any other person. Touch not my hand. There you go. There. Touch my anointed. Looking back. That has healed me, Lynn. Oh God, that gave me chills right now. Yeah. Because and God could be saying, It's you, Lynn. Touch. You guys, touch not my anointed. Do my prophet no harm. When she was in her mother's womb, I knew her. I consecrated her. She's changing nations through her channel. Touch not my anointed and do them and do her no harm. Wow. And God has healed my heart through that scripture. Through that scripture. The very scripture yes. that tore me apart. Yes. So we would receive money. Yeah. I can't question. And it continued. It continued. So it got to a point September or November of 2012, prophetess start saying, you, be, you guys need to come for a second honeymoon in South Africa. Start preparing your passports. 
I had a passport. Remember that yes. singer that yes. was all over? all over? I had a passport. And him, he had a passport. Mm. I think he had been to Rwanda before. Mm. So she's like, you need to start applying for a South African visa because I want you to come mm. for a second honeymoon. Mm. And she's aware of what happened in the, in the honeymoon. Mm. That's a story for another day. So I was like, whoa, she's thinking good about us. And in that whole process, she didn't contribute anything. It was partners who contributed. Mm. So my ex used to reach out to them, like, we have a target. We have a trip to South Africa. And this is the targets that we have. And there was this main partner, allow me not to mention her name because yes. she requested me. Yeah. There was this main partner, I call her partner A. She was the biggest supporter of this guy, his ministry. Mm -hmm. She believed in him. Mm -hmm. And she's the one who sponsored that trip. You can imagine one person giving 300,000 shillings, clean, with no strings, nothing. She said, you guys go have fun. Luckily, we got the visa. He's the one who went to get yes. the visa. I was left in the house in mm. the city, like, nations, we are coming, you know? <laughs> this is it. This is it. And when we, uh, he called me and said, we've been granted the visa, I was like, yeah, nations. You know how these things just yes. keep fueling yes. you, like, yeah, yes. we're going somewhere. So I was just that wife, that, <laughs> that wife that's mm. there to support. So we went to South Africa. And the moment we landed in this house, Lynn, I was shocked. The mansion, it was like, if I remember, it was like five bedrooms. Yes. Mansion. And, and as we were spending outside in the servants' quarter, you can imagine such kind of a house. And this is someone who is not working. She's the prophet. Yes. Can I ask you? Yeah. What nationality was this prophetess? Kikuyu. Kenyan. Kenyan. Yes. Kenyan. From Muranga. What? Her husband is from Eldoret. She's from Muranga. So she's now in South Africa. She's now in South Operating Africa. Operating from there. Operating from there. Living a lavish life. Yes. After sharing my story, there's a woman who reached out to me yes. and gave me the whole story of how she took them to South Africa. They used to preach in Nakuru. So there is another story to that. Mm. So she, mansion, big mansion, and the husband is an accountant. And she keeps saying how his job is unstable. So she's the one who is financing mm. this lifestyle. Mm. And that shocked me. Like, whoa. The targets we keep getting, the financial targets, the kind of lifestyle they are supporting. Anyway, in my head, I'm like, none of my business. Also, you know, we are but again, for this exactly. But then, question mark, question, question mark, mark, question mark, mark, question mark, question mark. And while we're in South Africa, partner A gets a call from my ex, from my prince. Mm. And she's told, um, you need to sow a seed. I don't know what seed it was about. By this time, at most of those phone calls now, mm. he, he's, he's mm. making sure yes. that I'm near. Yeah. I have an idea. Yes. So that conversation ended. I didn't know how, what mm. they, you know. Mm. Mine was just to enjoy my life, mm. like, like South Africa, Johannesburg. Yes. yes. And three days later, my prince calls me to the servant's quarter and tells me, I would like to let you know, partner A sent 250,000 Kenya shillings and I already transferred it to prophetess. And I asked him, when did she transfer the money? He said, um, I think it was the day before. And when did you transfer the money without asking me? Of course, it's none of my business, Lynn. But just bring me in as your wife. Yes. Let me, me know. To speed. Tell yeah. me what's happening. We're going far together. <laughs> <laughs> stop stop keeping me like... He's in the dark. You know, yeah, in the dark. Let me know. Yes. So the guy goes like, I already transferred the money. It was a seed, da, 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 da. And I asked him, don't you think we deserve to buy some shoes, you know, some a nice suit for you? coming out of South Africa. You didn't even leave something kidogo for us. He's like, no, it was a seed. 
And so in my head, how this woman controls our finances continued, you know, building up in my head. And I'm like, goodness, where is my voice in this? I don't, I'm not even supposed to contribute anything. Like, just let me comment something before you, you go running, doing what she's, yes. you know? Even show me my opinion show counts, me my opinion. even if you don't agree. Exactly. And it was never there. Mm. There was nothing. The, mm -hmm. All my marriage, mm. it was prophetess. And then him, what he has decided. And in between that, he will say God. Him. Imagine God was not fast. Yes. Prophetess. And then him or mm. him and prophetess, and then, then God. God will come first. Mm. And then when I'm told God has said, I came to interpret his prophetess has mm. given an instruction mm. that this is what we are supposed to do. Because I would, there are things I would ask, can we pray about it first? No, 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 it's done. This is it. So it was always prophetess, prophetess, prophet. And at this point, I began getting worried, Lynn, because I'm like, I'm in trouble. I don't matter in this thing. And especially that 250,000, Lynn, that was tough. That's not five shillings. It's not. That's not money that you just, you know, make it mm. pass mm. through the air mm. like it's mm. not a big mm. deal. Mm. 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 And I was like, goodness, the, my opinion truly does not count. Mm. And that's where now we started colliding slowly by slowly. My opinion, his opinion, my opinion, prophetess opinion. So prophetess opinion was always number one. His opinion and God's opinion in between there. Mm -hmm. And then mine is just, mm. it don't matter. Mm. You, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, you're fine. Mm. And whatever you do, just mm. don't touch the anointed. Mm. Don't touch the, the, the prophet of mm. God. Mm. So we, we started fighting. And at this point, when we came back to Kenya, and I remember we went to preach somewhere in South Africa. The husband had made a way for us mm. to go and preach somewhere. Mm. And in that place, we were given, I think, 50 rand. Which, I don't know 50 rand what that is. Mm. 500. It was 5,000 yes. Kenya shillings. Yes. And just the moment it landed into our hands, prophetess said, it's a fast fruit for you being in South Africa. Again, I fought. Well, yeah, for your K. Yeah, I thought I was like, when, when will it be about us? We are the ones who should decide what we do with our finances, Lynn. And we are the ones who should decide we are giving this to prophetess. Mm. And sometimes I told my ex, sometimes God would not even want us to give her. There is someone somewhere that could need it more than her. Mm. But we are always, you know, yes. And that was a big mistake. So this 5K, we were told, fast fruit. So prophetess. And I'm like, goodness. So some money came from partner A after that. I think it was 6,000. Mm. And that money I refused. I told him, we need to buy something. I don't have clothes. In Kenya, I didn't have clothes. I was beginning to, to you know, yes. gain weight. And I didn't have enough clothes mm. to wear. And I told him we need to buy mm. some clothes. Mm. And out of that trip, that's where now he allowed and we bought some clothes, like three pairs of jeans, yes. two dresses, yeah. which was good. I appreciate it. Mm. And we came back. Coming back to Kenya, the moment we landed, a call comes through from Prophetess. Just when we go to the house, a call comes through from Prophetess. And she gives an instruction. You guys need to move. You need to move from that dirty estate. We used to live in Eastlands. You need to move from that place and find a comfortable neighborhood. People who are jobless. Find a comfortable neighborhood and you need to move there. And once you move there, I want you to keep my room for me. Keep a room for me. Because your house will be like my Kenyan Headquarter. Yes. And once you move, get me the best. You know, I'm the one who is supposed to decide. Yeah, to decide where we live. Yes. Like, this is where I'm comfortable. Let's work with this. This is our budget, mm. you know. And I was that 
person. I wanted us to start from somewhere. We are going far in, but let's start from somewhere. MOG, my ex is like, no, 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 we are going to move. We moved to the Indigwa. And the Indigwa was expensive. Imagine moving from Umoja, a house of 9,000 shillings, all the way to the Indigwa, 25,000 shillings. And you are jobless. You don't have a job. You don't even know where tomorrow's food is coming from. You just know you have partners. I came to discover later, Prophetess had found out that partner A had gotten a job of 100,000 shillings. And she had given an instruction. At this point, when after we, have, uh, we are moving, mm. we are now planning to move, mm. she gives an instruction that my ex, my prince and all his partners should start tithing 50%. Imagine, that's now the word of God. That's what God is saying. And our Bibles are closed. Lean. You cannot even open, you cannot your own even Bible open and prove and her wrong. for yourself. Yes. You cannot prove it wrong. You rely on her interpretation. You rely on her interpretation. Of what God has commanded. Exactly. And what God wants for you. So my house became like the man of the house is prophetess, you know? And the woman of the house is your somehow prince. my prince. I'm just that person, like the cartoon that, you know, does whatever is yes. commanded. Yeah. So she, she, she decrees that we're going to start, everyone should start tithing 50% because the place that God is taking us in the next two years, you will not believe. So we started, partner A has gotten a job, 100,000. What does she give? 50%. 50%. 50%. That's 50,000. That's 50,000. Comes into my husband's account. I even have those accounts in my head. So to date. this prophetess yeah. is instructing partner A, mm -hmm. your job is to support this man of God. They are not in touch. They direct. are not in touch directly. Yes. But there is a circle here. Yes. So now your prince yes. gets money from partner A. Yes. And now we need to start tithing 50%. 50 percent. Yes. This is a cycle. Here. And when when prophetess gives an instruction, yes. man of God divulges it the to his partners. Has said, the prophetess has said. Was when did God ever say something? That's what I used to ask myself. Lean if there was a time I felt confused about God. Was that time? Was that time? I wanna go to the stage where yeah. now you are moving into this posh place. Yeah. Prophetess comes, yeah. she has a room in your house. Yeah. Your husband now starts, you know, you are starting to get fed up. Yeah. You say, I wanna get out. Yeah. You successfully get out. Yeah. And what has become yeah. of you said mm. you lost mother. Mm. We want to find out, mm. have you found yeah. mother back? Yeah. So guys, I know you all going to be like, oh, Lynn, why, why, why? But we got to take a break because yeah. you know the drill. Here on the show, we do not rush our guests. And I want to come back for part two, which airs tomorrow at 10 a.m. So all you need to do is digest what has already been talked about. Tell your friends so that all of you can tune tomorrow at 10 a.m. for part two and the final part of this conversation. Don't go away. Let's continue having this discussion.